the second declaration of independence by the 50 United States of America. Trusting that our cause is just and having prayed for the fortitude to brave spiritual wickedness in high places, we citizens of America make this announcement to the shareholders of U.S. Corporation, including the City of London, the British Crown, and the Vatican, and their operatives in the media, government, and society. This is the Second Declaration of Independence. With the utmost respect and admiration for the founders of America and the frames of the original Declaration of Independence, the American people humbly emulate their thoughtful, measured response to ascending tyranny and deputism. We too believe it is the moral obligation of those privileged with knowledge and opportunity to work on behalf of the people, that the people are served best when their benefactors choose unity over division, nationalism over globalism, sovereignty over submission, and liberty over oppression. Eight, value that America was founded under God. That the God, that the God of America is just, peaceable, and tolerant. That our natural gifts as sovereigns come from God and that our God-given rights may not be revoked, suspended, negated, or abridged without due process. Distinguishes the second declaration of independence from its progenitor is the object from which we seek independence. Regrettably, to our great misfortune, shame and dismay, and despite the recurrent warnings and accorded safeguards, a cabal of foreign investors and privateers have managed to gain possession of our land, our wealth, our labor, our well-being, our future, and even our children. Although history has become muddied with varied interpretations of cardinal events, including the surreptitious adoption of a second corporate constitution and the uncertain ratification of several amendments destructive to the people. It matters only that one or more alien groups lay claim to America and its assets. Rather than speculate on motive and weigh unprofitably, the biased accounts, unverifiable information, and plentious theories and opinions, we engaged a perfect solution. We exact independence from all claimants, past and present, proclaimed, identified, or veiled. As such, the usurpers named in this declaration are representative and not specific or exhaustive, regardless of supposed ancestry, precedent, instrument, or process. Although simply enumerating transgressions and usurpations would suffice to justify insularity, recounting significant events reveals important facts that are missing from history. These forgotten facts add insight, perspective, and clarity, illuminating our best way forward. The inevitable civil war destroyed America's economy, ripped families apart, and cast a questionable shadow on the future of a once promising nation. America was in trouble financially and needed a massive infusion of capital to get back on its feet. Two, a cabal of nation building venture capitalists from Europe agreed to finance America's recovery, but demanded an active role in government to ensure their investment. In 1871, mired in debt, Congress worked out a partnership. In exchange for boundless financial support, the foreign investors would handle America's administrative needs. Three, although initially it seemed to be an innocuous concession, the consequences of allowing the nation building venture capitalists to conduct America's business beyond the protections of the U.S. Constitution proved catastrophic. The investors quickly embedded operatives throughout the foreign-owned corporate government and Washington, D.C., began serving the interests of America's financiers over the people. In 1871, America effectively lost its independence and the nation-building venture capitalists became our new masters. 
for by the early 1900s, the foreign investors that bankrolled America controlled the major newspapers and news services, enabling them to shape what is reported and how it is to be framed. They had to cover their tracks before being exposed and repudiated by the people. Five, the nation-building venture capitalists worked to soften America's imperturbable elevated system of government. The founders had formed a constitutional republic instead of a democracy specifically to prevent citizens in the majority from oppressing those in the minority. By doing that, it is best for their district or state rather then enforce the majority will representatives serve all citizens equally eliminating the noise division and violence intrinsic to democracies being in control of the narrative the foreign investors ingeniously promoted the fallacy of that america is a democracy trusting that the deception would lead to unrest and chaos that would make America vulnerable, creating additional opportunities for infiltration and manipulation. Six, in 1913, the foreign investors established the Anti-Defamation League to slander anyone who exposed them and their infiltration into American politics. Seven, in 1913, by way of the 16th Amendment, the foreign investors were granted the authority to tax the American people directly, something expressly prohibited by the original Constitution, that the people would willingly subject themselves to force confiscation of their property, their labor, is illogical, putting the legitimacy of ratification in question. Eight, in 1913, by way of the 17th Amendment, the foreign investors breached an important safeguard that protected our constitutional republic from infiltration by enemy forces. Previously, senators were statesmen, quote unquote, appointed by the respective state legislatures as a check on the House of Representatives raiding the public treasury. Henceforth, senators would run as glorified House representatives, reducing to promising free public money and services for votes. The authenticity of ratification is unlikely because the state legislatures would not willingly surrender their authority to bridle the appetite of the people's house, nor would they accede to transfer more power to the federal government, opening yet another door for international bankers to buy the influence they need to further their grip on America. Nine, in 1913, the foreign investors gained control of our currency by pushing through Congress the Federal Reserve Act establishing a foreign-owned central banking system despite the dire warnings of presidents Thomas Jefferson, Andrew Jackson, Abraham Lincoln, Andrew Johnson, James Garfield, and William McKinley. The Federal Reserve Act passed with the help of compromised legislatures between 1.30 and 4.30 a.m. on December 22nd when most members were away on their Christmas holiday. 10. In 1920, Congress, by way of the Independent Treasury Act, turned over the U.S. Treasury Department and its assets, our gold and silver, to the Federal Reserve, the central banking system owned by foreign investors established in 1913. 11. In 1921, the Council of Foreign Relations was formed under cover of advancing America's interest in the world. In fact, the Council of Foreign Relations is sponsored by the City of London and serves to advance the interest of foreign-owned Federal Reserve by directing the President, Congress, and the narrative through operatives in their news and information networks. In 1925, the owners of the Federal Reserve formed the United States Corporation, just five out of the hundred shares issued were identified with the balance of the shareholders of the U.S. Corp remaining anonymous, yet the money trail leads to the City of London, the British Crown, and the Vatican. The tax dollars we send to the Internal Revenue Service 
go to the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank, which are under their control. The official formation of U.S. Corp. set the stage for the transformation of America from a constitutional republic of the people to a corporation owned by foreign interests and their families. Over the next few years, the individual states were registered as corporations as well, making them franchises of U.S. Corp. Representatives and senators neither represent nor work for the American people. Rather, they are managers of U.S. Corp. and as such, they are obligated first to serve its best interest. The president is not just the president of America. He is the CEO of U.S. Corporation. 14. The abbreviated term United States was purposely used to represent both America and U.S. Corp to blur the distinction between them. Similarly, the original U.S. Constitution was quietly supplanted by an imposter, corporate all capital letters Constitution, that bears a similar name and appearance, again, to confuse and deceive the American people. Specifically, the Constitution for the United States of America was replaced by the Constitution of the United States. The latter's Corporate statues becoming the supreme law of America. 15. In 1933, the U.S. federal government declared bankruptcy and President Roosevelt, its acting CEO, signed over to U.S. Corp. America and its assets, including the people and our labor. The bankruptcy of 1933 that was arguably unnecessary, ceremonial in nature, and contrived and orchestrated without the consent of the people, completed the heist and transfer of America and its same foreign interests who own U.S. Corporation. In the bankruptcy of 1933, U.S. Corp. forced the American people to surrender their gold in trade for debt notes called dollars fiat currency that has no real value and that is depreciated continually through inflation to where it's worth just four cents today. The bankruptcy of 1933 put U.S. Corp. in a state of emergency allowing it to implement admiralty law made evident by the gold fringe around the American flag. When in a U.S. corporation courtroom, you are considered at sea and not a citizen of a 18. In 1936, U.S. Corp. began issuing social security numbers to turn otherwise sovereign Americans into trustees of corporate fictions, making our labor taxable, which would otherwise be unconstitutional. According to U.S. Corp., you are not a live man or woman, but rather a representative of a corporation in your name. In 1945, the anonymous owners of U.S. Corp. founded the United Nations under the guise of spreading peace, civility, and humanitarian assistance throughout the world. Yet the true purpose is to condition citizens to recognize an international authority, a first step in establishing their new world order, in which the U.S. Constitution is retired to make room for a universal totalitarian government. United Nations publications Agenda 21 and Agenda 30 reveal the New World Order agenda calling for the end of nationalism, patriotism, private property, individual, the two-parent family, automobiles, air travel, and the right to defend ourselves from a tyrannical government. In keeping with their goal of sustainable development, they plan to reduce the population by over 90%, ridding America and the world of dissidents and useless eaters. The remaining useful servants are to live in coastal communities wherein they will be stacked and packed in micro apartments. 21. The only thing standing in their way of their new world order is a strong prosperous and secure America. To achieve their goal of world domination, America must lose its sovereignty and leadership position and thus why the owners of you as Corp quietly work to undermine our culture, systems, beliefs, standards, aspirations, and morals for over a hundred years, employing unrestrained methods and tactics. 22. 
With trillions of dollars at their disposal every year from taxing our labor, the owners of U.S. Corp. fund leftist nonprofit groups, including the Council of Foreign Relations, that work to subvert our nation and silence anyone in opposition. They integrate the officials and administrators who run the largest charities and organizations, including the AMA, the APA, the CDC, the FCC, the SEC, and the FDA, and they embed operatives in the State Department, the Department of Justice, and intelligence agencies, official and covert, including the NSA, FBI, and CIA. 23. For 23. In trade for generous grants and endowments, the anonymous owners of U.S. Corp. shape the curriculum and political sentiment of the public schools, colleges, and universities, ensuring the next generations, our children, harbor disdain for their country, their history, their culture, their family, and even their ethnicity. 24. The anonymous owners of U.S. Corp. keep the people in the dark about true history of America, the greatest heist and cover-up in history, by controlling public education, the major publishers, the news services, the airwaves, and the social and information networks. 25. The foreign owners of U.S. Corp. prop up puppets throughout society and government, allowing them to make millions of dollars in trade for perpetrating their agenda of secrecy and subjugation of America. These traitors include prominent politicians, newsreaders, pundits, authors, movie stars, and the heads of the social news and information networks, major sports teams, musical and entertainment industries, and corporate conglomerates responsible for over 90% of the products designed, manufactured, advertised, purchased, financed, and consumed. 26. By way of funding campaigns in fixing elections, the owners of U.S. Corp. obligate the most influential politicians to further their agenda by breaking America socially and financially. They promote disdain for our country, dependency on government, indulgence, lawlessness, and immorality to spoil and dishearten citizens, predisposing them to trade their sovereignty for the false promises of an international unelected government sponsored by the world elite. 27. By way of the Democrat Party and operatives posing as television hosts, entertainers, journalists, pundits, and policy experts, the owners of U.S. Corp. brainwash and condition the people to accept invalid arguments and pseudoscience that call for globalism socialism, and a godless society in which technology is our moral compass. 28. The operatives of a foreign-owned U.S. Corp. are deeply rooted throughout the news and information networks, academia, government, and society, colloquial referred to as the deep state, the shadow government, and the swamp. The operatives perform with a hive mind because they are guilty of treason, a crime punishable by death. They are desperate to hide their complicity, and thus they systematically target, demonize, and even suicide all those who threaten to expose their treachery and malfeasance. 29. The operatives of U.S. Corp. favor unbridled immigration because it is the most expedient way to destroy a country from within, flooding America with illegal immigrants without allowing them time to assimilate ensures arrogance, separation, and anti-Americanism, and anger, animosity, and conflict with the people. By design, we can also expect a steady delusion of the principles, ethics, and systems that made America successful. Moreover, the majority of illegal immigrants are likely to vote for Democrats who legislate according to the will of the foreign owners of the U.S. 31. In conjunction with skewed statistics, deceptive polls, false facts, and the omission of decisive information, the owners of U.S. Corp. promote anti-Americanism and their new world order agenda. Fake news keeps the people disoriented, misinformed, 
divided over ethnicity, gender, sexual orientation, religion, and economic class. Meanwhile, their debt system enslaves us. Their grip ever tightens through surveillance and fluoridation, vaccinations, and other technologies are deployed to weaken any substantive opposition. 32. The owners of U.S. Corp. are working incessantly to disarm the millions of law-abiding patriots who will stand in the way of their totalitarian oppressive New World Order. By way of orchestrated mass shootings, the owners of U.S. Corp. will continue to terrorize the people until we assent to comprehensive background checks. The word comprehensive is nebulous and undefined, allowing for a battery of psychological and medical testing, testing ever expanding until targeted individuals are deemed emotionally unstable and a danger to society. True to the predictions of every futuristic book and movie, patriotic Americans will be disarmed by way of political profiling under the guise of screening for mental health. 33. Through their vast indoctrination machine, the foreign owners of U.S. Corp. have convinced the people that America is a democracy and that that democracy and that democracy is the highest form of government. This is problematic because democracy is, by definition, mob rule. Democracies invariably fail because the majority mob always demands more and more public monies and services procured through excessive taxation, socialist-like policies resulting in economic ruin, runaway, and ultimately fiscal collapse and ultimately social implosion, opening the door for the, promise, pre the promised, predicted, dreadful, and ever-looming new world order. Because sovereignty is not sustainable without exposing ills of democracy and reestablishing our elevated constitutional republic, we are compelled to make the following proclamations. A. The word democracy does not appear anywhere in America's founding documents because the framers knew that democracy in any form or disguise is fatally flawed, leading invariably to oppression, unrest, society, unrest, societal failure, violence, and death. B. All modern forms of government are elected democratically. They are differentiated only by who makes the decisions after elections are over. C. In a democracy, citizens in the majority make the rules, leaving those in the minority oppressed. Consequently, a democracy is always noisy, divisive, divided, ineffective, divided, inefficient, unsteady, combustible, fiscally irresponsible, and short-lived. D. America was established as a constitutional republic to avoid the many ills of democracy. In a constitutional republic, those elected must not do the bidding of the citizen majority. Rather, they must do what is best for the district or state, despite the majority will. In this way, all citizens are represented equally, and no one is oppressed, making a constitutional republic quiet, steady, efficient, and preferred. E. Although the word democracy feels good, it is founded on mob rule, making it akin to socialism, communism, and every other tyrannical form of government. Finally, Article 4, Section 4 of the U.S. Constitution resolves any doubt the United States shall guarantee every state in this union a Republican form of government. Having exposed the greatest heist and cover-up in history, we are able to summarize America and its assets very quietly hijacked, and the cover-up has resulted in unthinkable crimes against the people and humanity. Allowing the hostile takeover to stand will lead eventually to complete and irreversible subrogation and the eradication of truth, justice, and all that is good. This second declaration of independence distinguishes the United States of America from the subversive United States Corporation. 
It's assets that U.S. Corp. was formed illegally, that it is a foreign owned, and that its shareholders have been quietly at war with America for over 150 years. Treasonous operatives embedded within government and that fiercely divide the citizenry and facilitate conflict among the nations to hide that U.S. Corp. is and always has been the only real enemy of America. This second declaration of independence also repudiates with conviction U.S. Corp.'s satanically inspired plan for world governance. In addition of being of, by, and for the elite and not the people, their falsely advertised pseudo-utopian unelected totalitarian new world order would supplant America's sovereignty and extinguish forever any semblance of liberty and prosperity because natural inclinations because natural inclinations predispose human beings to be short-sighted malleable and easily bamboozled one might presume the American people should bear responsibility for being swindled out of their homeland inherited from their forefathers who procured and secured it at great expense and much sacrifice and for slowly but steadily trading their largely unappreciated blessings of liberty opportunity and prosperity for trinkets in the form of unearned comforts frivolous indulgence and glutinous pleasures however the transfer of ownership from the american people was not conducted openly and with candor but clandestinely through calculated design and nefarious means without body consent and unconstitutionally it is for the latter reason that the american people claim it is for the latter reason that the american people claim their right to rectification that that the greatest heist in history was effected outside the constraints of the u.s constitution and that those who were elected to represent america's best interests transgressed their fiduciary responsibility and exceeded their authority warrants this proclamation that the american people are the rightful owners of our land our labor our well-being our future and our children for our benefit and the benefit of our posterity as with any negotiated peace after years of atrocities committed by parties at war we seek neither vengeance nor demand justice for past transgressions we simply adjure the return of what rightfully belongs to the people and avow firmly emphatically publicly and officially that america shall forever remain a sovereign nation free self-directed and not affiliated or dependent upon any version or variation of the present planned or innovated new world order we entreat a bloodless solution wherein you seize all destructive activities including false flag events dissolve u.s corp and all other illicit legal structures and custodial instruments return our land and assets including our gold and silver redirect the tax collected on our labor back to america and have your deep state and shadow government operatives retire withdrawing your influence in an orderly fashion so society continues to thrive in trade for your keeping your wealth your position and your heads in response to questions regarding legitimacy efficiency and process throwing off the shackles of national throwing off the shackles of our national thraldom is elementary and unambiguous as evidenced by the separation of the 13 colonies from britain in 1776 and the mexican people from spain in 1825 a formal declaration hailed by authorized representatives procures independence that is immediate whole consummate infragible and unencumbered by obligation condition or imposition as we enter grievous territory we reflect on the precious as we enter grievous territory we reflect on the precarious road our forefathers forged when there they judiciously served the political and familial 
ties that bound them. Our hearts also are filled with melancholy and trepidation. Yet we too are resolute in our posture and position from being confronted with no better option. Despite the manifest peril, the consequences of acquiescence are graver still, compelling us to claim solemnly our independence once again. So in support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the pro protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. The 56 signatories of the task force are to be affixed at the time of presentation to Congress, the President, and 50 legislatures, and the governors of the respective states. Academia, government, and society. 